What's up, guys? Welcome back to Average Takes. A- average Takes. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're bringing you our 2022 season opener, basically. Season in like stars or stars. Quotes. stars. Yeah, quotes. I mean, the negotiations are still going on. They're still underway, but they're expected to be done sometimes this week. Hopefully, we're praying to the baseball gods. Um, but we're bringing you our 2022 Padres season opener, the San Diego Padres, our team, San Diego. Our team, baby. Uh, yeah, the love. My team. The drive. The reason, you know. Padres went about 79 drive. and 83. Don't remind us. Don't remind Missed us. the play in the past. Yeah. His story <laughs> of the past as we got rid of a lot of our coaching staff, Jace Tingler, and most of our staff is gone. Replaced with Bob Melvin and a fully new hire. I mean, we kept two guys, like realistically. Fully loaded. Um, Bob I Melvin think- manager, Ryan Christensen, who we brought over from his um, days with the A's, is going to be his bench coach. Um, Michael Bedar, the Giants, um, former hitting coach. Ruben Nabila, he's our pitching coach. And – I mean, there's a couple of other surprising names. Francisco Cervelli, Fire. former Major League Baseball catcher for a long time, Pirates, Yankees, a couple other teams. Um, but he's our catching coach. And then we got Brian P- Price, um, Ryan Flaherty, we're bringing back a couple more guys, you know. Um, Mike Schmidt is also like a senior advisor. Schilt. Sure. Or Schilt. Yeah, there you go. Schmidt. I was thinking of Phillies Schmidt. But, yeah, there you go. Mike Schilt, the Cardinals former manager. Um, who else? Mark Loretta. He's announced bringing back. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of names. Um, but those are kind of the coaches aspect of our team. Bob Melvin is the face of our staff, but a solid, awesome. This is the first time in a long time – We've got a guy with experience. We didn't hire a rookie for a manager. Dude. You know, it's been a long time. Long time. Long time. Long time Even coming. Back to Bruce Bochy was a first time manager. Like, so there's some long time guys who we've been that. just hiring first time managers. So it feels good to get a guy with experience. <laughs> um, when she came back, dude. Come on. No, that's for our parents. That's for we get Bob Melvin. Oh, yes. Yes. okay. All right. Oh, Mel. This is a new era. This is a new era. I'm hype on him. I love it. I think he did pretty good with the A's. Um, got the A's where they needed to be, at least for him. And then he moved yeah. on. And now it's time for him to do the same with the Padres. Yeah. I'm excited th- for it. Excited for the future. I think a lot of fans won't know how much of an impact he's going to make on a day to day basis playing baseball. Jace mm-hmm. Tingler. I think he's going to go down as one of our worst coaches with the teams that we're going to have these next couple of years. The way, what he did with the teams we had, like not, that doesn't cut it. And now he's over there in Minnesota. See you later, buddy. We get Bob Melvin. Guy, but guy just I... guy goes from Oakland to San Diego. The weather cannot, anything that you change cannot get any better. You're already in California. You already got that Northern California like vibe. And he doesn't need to learn how to coach in the MLB. Like you said, veteran. I hate how um, – damn, I forget his name already. Was that the last coach? Jason Singler. Yeah, Jason. Uh, he had to learn how to coach in the MLB and also learn how to create relationships with his guys. And, I mean, Bob Melvin only has to create that relationship and get right to the X's and O's of baseball. Yeah. So, I like that and a one lot. Of, one of the things I, I do like as well, um, Moneyball is something that was created and invented in Oakland. Um, some of Bob Melvin's time being there. And yeah. Moneyball is basically getting the best out of your players with the least amount of money spent possible. So now he gets to go to a team that is kind of on the opposite trend where we're going to spend the money. They just signed Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado, $300 million plus deals back to back off seasons. So that's definitely showing, like, we want to win. Those are obviously two of our win studs we have. Team. Yeah, and we're, we've are we obviously dedicated a lot of our time to spending money, and Bob Melvin now gets to coach with talented, way more talented guys than he maybe had in the A's. So 
I am. I think it's exciting, and I think and he than he's ever had. You know, ever. Like that, that's one thing that's taken away is his time with the A's. Is that he's a winner over there? Many division championships, wild card rounds. You know, being making the playoffs is something that the Padres team has needed to do and has lacked to do over the last decade. You know, so. It's something that the Padres definitely needed was a proven manager. And what took me away is in his opening press conference before this whole lockout situation started was that he talked about how when the A's came to San Diego and played and saw the fans and the way the fans interacted with the players and the the way our guys like played with each other. And, you know, that was one of the peak times in San Diego. One of the peak moments um, was against that, like, that series against the A's, you know, a couple of comeback games, home, big home runs, you know, and he got to witness that firsthand and the A's decided to give him the opportunity to finally win with a contending team that's winning this, willing to spend money, like you said. And I am so excited for that aspect because he's such a great manager overall. And yeah. the Padres have the guys to do it. And let's break down this roster because there, there is some holes in this roster that I want to get into, and then there's some crowded areas. So we got to have a lopsided team right now, and I know the lockout's really affecting pissing me off. Yes, <laughs> definitely pissing me off. But it's really, really affected the way that teams are built right now because no one looks ready. Like no team is full. There's a lot of big name free agents. It's also annoying that the lockout is going to cause a lot of excuses, honestly, for some of these guys and teams. And it's, I hope the Padres aren't one of them, but fuck, if it does, like that's going to piss me off even more in (laughs) eight more months when this, when this should be behind me, this, this new deal, whatever should be way behind should have already happened, but it's not, uh, but let's get into it. Let's break down this team, um, the team needs, and kind of just what needs to happen so we can win a World Series because that's the that's the only fucking goal in playing this game. Yes, only goal for the Padres at this point of this roster. So let's start at the top, the catcher. I want to start right at the bare end of the game. Um, one of the one of the holes the Padres had last year is catching. Yeah. I mean, for a long time, it's been hitting aspect. Last year, defensively, I mean, I liked what Caratini brought. I know Austin Nola didn't play as much, you know, a lot of injuries, knee injury, thumb injury he dealt with early. Um, A lot of things happened last year for him. So, you know, now adding, we're adding a catcher. We traded for Jorge Afalo. Yeah. Um, And then one of our top prospects being Luis Campizano is another catcher. So we kind of have a four catcher mix right now. Yeah. And breaking it down, playing wise, I mean, the guy who caught the most for us last year had to be Caratini. Yeah, hundred percent. Caratini caught for us the most, and I mean, overall, if you look at it overall, I guess he did the best job. I mean, subpar at best. Yes, I'm not gonna kill him because he actually played more games, more innings, caught than anybody. New guys. I mean, he was a newer guy on our team, and. You know, I can't kill him for it. 116 games. The pitchers love him. The pitchers do love him. At best, yes. And pitchers loved him. You know, he got relationships with you, Darvish. He's his personal catcher. And Musgrove, I mean, it seems like he's his personal catcher. So it seems like he has a spot on this roster. Yeah. To me, at this point right now, he's two guys' favorite target. I mean. And Snell, because Snell and Campizano could not figure anything out. Yeah, at all. And. And like that's but Snell, that's, a, that's a Jace Tingler move. So annoying. <laughs> yes, but Snell actually got on rhythm with Nola. And when Nola came back, that's when I saw the best Blake Snell is when Austin Nola was catching his games game in and game out. Like I was there front hand for a couple of games. He pitched awesome against the Mets. I'm pretty sure it was Nola. You know, he pitched awesome against Diamondbacks twice. Toward, I mean, his stretch of like the second half before he got the groin injury was awesome. And so that gives me Nola has, a, I think, a spot on this team catching him. Will he catch every day? No, I do not think Nola will be, will be on catch. the IR again if he catches every day. Yeah. And so this is kind of where the Jorge Afalo situation comes underway because Jorge is a better hitter than these guys. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to be really good. 
because say Campizano is not ready for one more year, then we're in a perfect situation because we have Austin Nolu who can play basically anywhere in the field. And the best thing about uh, teams right now, or what I see in teams that make it far in playoffs, they have the most depth. They have the least amount of guys hurt in like on their team. And it's usually that's in every sport, if you want to look at it like that, but we need depth and it, I don't think it hurts having three catchers or four catchers even, but I mean, it's going to hurt because you ha- can't have four catchers and then we're having pitching problems. Like there has to be things need to be yeah. figured out. Well, I definitely don't think Campuzano's ready. Um, yeah, I, unless he just took a huge step this, yeah, this off season, but. And the, you know, I, I can't expect him to jump when there wasn't really much of a baseline, like anything like, yeah, he had a couple bright spots. I still think he's going to be at the triple a level, double a level. I don't know where they consider better off for him, but I don't think he'll be in the major league mix, but I do think with Nola and a follows ability to play multiple positions and the DH is where this helps out with the three catchers. So I definitely think there will be three catchers on this roster starting. Yeah, game one. I can see that, and Cambisano is still twenty three. Um, if he gets twenty six, twenty seven, and he's still kind of what he's doing, I, what he's, I what think he's done, he would be dealt before that. He'll be shipped. Yeah, exactly. So I think he's yeah. if he's not ready, but at some point next year, next maybe year. Yeah, I think he'll be traded next offseason, or maybe even this. Trade deadline because it, I know his, really, name, his name's been brought up with Eric Hosmer. And it's already been reported that like that. So yeah, I mean, it, I, the Padres are definitely looking to move him, and especially since they're bringing on Jorge Follow, who's only what twenty seven or something like that. I think yeah, I think he's twenty six. He's twenty eight. He'll, he'll be like twenty eight, twenty nine this year. So I mean, he's a little bit younger. Catchers do have longer lives. Out. Yeah. Nola's still not that old, even though he dealt with injuries, but I definitely think there's room for movement with Cambizano. I mean, Cambizano like, batted uh, an 08-8 eight, eight eight. in yeah. the major leagues. Like Francisco not, Cervelli, perfect example of an old catcher. Yes, last a long time. I want to defend um, Caratini's case, though. He, he played the most games he's ever played in a season, this last season. And so, I mean, that's a lot to put on a guy. I know he did, he played, didn't bat as well as we wanted him to, but he was there when we needed him. Austin Nola was hurt. Luis Cabrasano wasn't doing as well. And Caratini was the only catcher we had for a little while. And so I feel like he has his respect on this team. Half the pitchers like him. And so I really, I don't think he'd be the trade option or nothing. I think he's on this team for sure. And I like him. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Uh, I'm not take opposed that to had. it. I think yeah. he, he's definitely someone who will light up for other teams as well. If we're looking to trade him, I mean, I'm just going to point that out there. Yes, he put up a decent season for a catcher last year. Yeah, he didn't do too bad. He he was there when we needed him to. Yes, he, that was definitely not there. But I mean, but like as you were saying, him. he played the most games in his career. Yeah, he's um, tired. I'm sure he. Yeah. I'm sure he didn't go into the year thinking he was gonna contribute as much as he did have a biggest role you shouldn't go into a year thinking that as like a hit as a player but then i'm sure he wasn't thinking that either uh, no totally understand i'm sure he wasn't but like you have to think that's why he didn't have such a big role or such a big amount of games played before like this had to have came or it was coming soon and it sucks that it hit like here but i i get what you're saying he he did what he did because we had other problems. Nothing else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm fine with keeping. But I do him. like that Jorge ad. You guys also said Austin Nola can play anywhere on the diamond. And I mean, hey, if we got to bring Luis up and Austin Nola plays left field or something like that, I'm down with it. But well, and we have to, we just have to assume Nola's not going to play 50 games next year and Caratini's yeah. not going to play 116. Like it's going to be hopefully a little bit more spread and even. Yeah, because we had who was our catcher at the end of the year? The backup dude, the guy from AAA. Um, Rene Rivera. Yeah, no, it's not that. Um, <laughs> he's an old guy. He's never played in the big before. Yeah, I know you threw off a random name, and that's <laughs> you know, 
Webster Ramirez. Yeah. Oh, there we go. See you later, though, buddy. Piss me off for that one. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, you, I, I agree oh, with what we're all saying here is that depth matters. And with the DH and with the depth that our two catchers, um, with them being able to play a multiple position, I think that all helps. And I definitely think we'll carry three this year. I think that's a must, especially with Nola's injury. And, I mean, Caratini – Really worked well with two guys, but there's a whole five man guys, yeah. you know. And every team is looking for catchers. Like catchers oh. is the hardest position to like fill and get solid guys out of. Yeah. So having a young catcher is not a bad like not a bad thing. But at and the same I know, time, I know Nola only played 56 games, but he batted 272. Like that's a that's someone we need in our lineup. Two home runs, and he didn't hit his first till like August. Yeah, I I understand. He didn't play that much. <laughs> but I mean that's a guy you you could use as a utility yeah. catcher. Definitely. You know, I I love that for his position. I yeah, and I, I also I mean it's gonna be crazy or it's gonna be even better if say Alfaro or Caratini steps up, has a has a better year than they're supposed to. Yeah. They're only gonna add good to the team. <laughs> Okay, well, we settled it, our catcher. I don't know who will start. I mean, it'll definitely be – I think it'll be a rotation of who pitches best to who. But let's well, move on. Joe Musgrove starting opening day, we have to assume Caratini will catch. Yeah, I, I, I'll go ahead. and We could, we could say that. Um, all right, let's move on to first base because this is a position that we can't just check off because Eric Cosmer has been in trade, talk, speculations. Eric Cosmer is in the – best fielder anymore we have a dh now what's the deal with eric hosmer but you know if the padres are good i think eric hosmer will be good i think bo mel is someone that the padres are going to love having because he's going to change their mentalities i know eric has had something wrong he's a big eye guy i don't really like it yeah, I don't like how you said. I don't like how you said we have to win for him to play good. No, like what he's if playing we, good. If we play, play good, good, he's gonna have a great year. Yeah, I think if the Padres but, are good, if we can say that with the whole team. He is doing good. Not true. We, we can. Fernando Tatis and Manny Machado will guaranteed have good years. That yeah. does not mean the Padres will be good. Yes, but it would make everybody else better. If you're winning, you're obviously gonna. Not play true. That's what just happened last year. Last year we were not winning. Fernando Tatis and Manny Machado carried our team. They were the only ones doing good. Yeah, and then Fernando Andrew, got hurt, and then we he, fell apart. He's I, but Bob saying if the Padres are going to be good, Eric Cosmer has to be good. Yes, oh, okay. I thought you meant also me. that okay. if he's on this roster, Eric Cosmer has to be good. And if he's going to bat what he batted last year, I'm okay with taking that. But as a DH, I can't have him as my first baseman with all those errors. I will yeah. take any. I will take Jake there. And I mean, I wouldn't be. Opar had his DH. best season with. Bo Mel over with Oakland. So, I mean, that, there's something, the connection there. There's definitely a connection there because he's one of the only players he knew when he's coming over. So, I know there's a connection there. But Air Cosmer either has to step up defensively way or he's only going to be a designated hitter and only hit versus some righties, you know, in his better matchups, like days that he plays first. I don't know. I don't know where he, where do you think he's at in his career, Trevor? Well, I'm taking a look at his numbers and I know we can't compare him to his time in Kansas city, but that's kind of his peak. So that's all we really have to look how good he was, you know? Um, but typically in his career, he has good year, bad year, good year, bad year. Since he came to San Diego, he's had bad year. Okay. 2020 was his best year, but that was a Mickey Mouse year. So we don't, no one really is counting that. Last year was a down year for him. Um, I personally think he is the right – he's the first baseman for this team, but it's if he can produce at this point now. You know, I've, I'm a big fan of his. I will give him his flowers when he when he gets it, when he deserves them. Um, but he has to produce. It's kind of a time where if you can't produce, like, we don't need you anymore. We're not, we're not waiting – we don't need the superstars anymore. We we got our name out there. We we are a destination. 
you have to play or you get the fuck out. Like that's kind of at this point how this team is shaped up. So I think he's a clubhouse leader. I think he's a leader on the field as well. But I just think, like Bob was saying, if the Padres make the playoffs, Eric Hosmer, I think, is going to have a big part in that. He's going to have more than 12 home runs. He's going to have more than 60 RBIs. Like that, Those are numbers for platoon first basemen, really. Bench guys who play every every Sunday. A guy who plays every Sunday can have 12 home runs and 60 RBIs in the whole year of baseball. This guy had 500 at bats and still put out the year he did, which is a down year because all everyone's going to bring up is he makes $95 million a year. And this is all he does. (laughs) So we just, if he produces just a hair better, I'm totally fine with that because I think he is good, but I just think with when everyone has all your eyes on you on every single move as hard as Padres were looked at last year. Everyone stared at Hosmer. You make a mistake, we're going to see it. Nobody cared that Tatis was making 14 errors, you know, or led the league in errors. Nobody really gave a fuck about that. Yeah. But when Eric Hosmer isn't, his fucking right foot's not on the bag, everyone, I see that memed on Twitter, you know, so. These are freaking little league mistakes, bro. Oh, I was agreeing with you right to the last second. (laughs) Eric Hosmer... I mean, yes, what you said, he does have to step up. I mean, 12 homers last year. This team needs to hit more dingers. Like, it, like two years ago, Slam Diego, this team hit too many dingers. Yeah. Last year, didn't hit enough. And substantially. Wham, wham Diego. Not. Yeah, they did not hit enough. But um, Eric Cosmer more disappointed me defensively because he's a four-time gold glover. I know he had, it says, credited seven errors. But Fernando Tatis had 22, and a lot of them, a lot of them, maybe 10, are pickable players. I'll give you, I'll give you eight. I'll give you eight. I'll give you eight. I think if I rewatch the tape, I could argue for 12. Maybe you might be able to. <laughs> okay. Okay. At least, at least that. So from where, yeah. somewhere from eight to 12. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell that. But all I'm saying is that. If Eric Hosmer is going to be this team's first baseman, I need him to be the leader, the city the, that loved, you know, Kansas City loved Eric Hosmer. He was the Royals. Yeah. We gave him that eight year, $180 million contract because we thought he was going to be the guy to appreciate this city, to love San Diego, to enjoy it, to make the simple plays. But since he's came here, since the day he came here, he overran the game losing Astros ball. I damn near cried because <laughs> I thought this was the move to make. I mean, not necessarily because I I really liked Will Myers, but I thought this was gonna help out the Padres in the long run. So far, he really hasn't sustained that contract level. But if I'm gonna be mad at him, I have to be mad at Will because same guy. Yeah. Hundred percent. But at the I same think- time, Hosmer, I the way we're going to get the best out of him is if he just focuses on one thing. Say he wants to hit. If you're going to be a hitter, you can play DH, you know? Don't worry about fielding. That's what the DH gives us the flexibility of. And thank God Bell Melvin's been in the, the AL this whole career. He knows exactly how to manage with the DH, exactly mm-hmm. how to manage. That's also another thing. A lot of these NL guys, their jobs are going to be a lot harder a managing lot with the different. DH now. And we went and got an AL manager. That's a great point that I haven't seen anyone talk about. Padres are a step above the game. We know how to coach with the DH. Oh, yeah. Damn. Trevor, tip off the cap right there. What a take right there. I Not love average. that. Yeah. Beyond average. All right. So right now, Eric Cosmer, I mean, I'm going to pencil him at first because I'm going to bet that Bo Mel gets the best out of him which he has for a long time with a lot of his guys. Yeah. And what's great about Bo Mel, well, I don't know if this is actually true, but I don't think he has social media. I don't think he's letting Twitter run his team as Jace Tingler was. (laughs) And maybe the Padres CEO. I just don't think he's going to let the GM control the team as much as he does. AJ Prezler has his fingertips on a lot of the everyday things 
when Jace but also, was manager. We haven't have had a manager. Sources. Yeah, I know. You, we haven't <laughs> had a manager that's older than our GM yet. And Bob Melvin finally someone. So Bob Melvin is not looking at AJ Peller thinking he's superior to me because Bob Melvin knows. Yeah. God damn, you're a rookie in this little in this joint, you know? <laughs> maybe you're a little AJ dog. Peller is is just a genius at work because maybe. maybe he just had to control how he wanted the team built for a while. Yeah. Then brought yeah. in the old dog to finish the job. I hope, I hope, I hope he's a genius. I hope. If not, he's the worst GM in Padres history. We need to get him out of here. Let's say Eric Hosmer plays DH, though. Who who plays first? I would it's have a, to pencil in. A, it also depends if we signed uh Tommy Fam. Okay, no. get the hell out of here. <laughs> that was just Twitter coming out of me. But what about Kim? I really like Kim at first base. I don't like his bat, but I mean he won't make as much errors as as Eric Hosmer did. Nah, I think Kim's a little no. too small. I like Kim at second. He was our best fielder percentage wise by far. He was great fielding. That's nasty at second fielder. And short. I mean, he's great. But I, I would have to go either Jake Cronenworth or Austin Nola. I think Nola is a, would be a great oh, Austin Nola, I forgot about that. He I, and he worked player. a little bit at it when he was coming back from his knee injury. I think that would be a, an awesome – Split time guy with Hosmer, maybe give Hos a couple days off. DH, I don't know. We have yeah. the DH now, and I love the DH man because it gives Hype these guys that. days off when they need it. Like Manny Machado deserves a day off, but to hit a couple times in the day, don't take much off the old block. No, nope. for him to swing the bat a couple times. So I mean, yeah. DH is an awesome thing that I have fought for forever, and I think baseball will be better with it. I don't have to see a pitcher go. Thank God I don't got to see you, Darvish, swing a bat every All right. Oh, no, RIP to pitchers hitting home runs now. Daniel yeah. Caminara might have been the last home run we ever saw by a pitcher. Yeah, true. Uh, true. For the Padres because – Well, who they went after him? Like the last game. <laughs> to a pitcher? Yeah, Logan Webb versus Daniel – or versus, <sighs> versus, Fuck. Um, Of course it was the Giants. Of course it was the Giants. <laughs> Nabil, Chris Matt, yeah. God damn, damn it. Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move. Second base is kind of a for sure thing. I mean, I know Jake kind of fell off the last the crone bit, zone. But Cronenworth was doing so much for the team that you kind of just when the team get, died. Get ready for him. He's going to have a career year. He's going to hit 300 at least. I think he's going to have 20 home runs. It's going to be a big year for my man, Jake the Rake. One of my favorite Jake's players on this fit team. right in, sure. in the like and two hole or three hole. Maybe. Jake can DH if we really need him to. He can yeah, DH. Yeah, true. true. True, 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 He's a He'd be a monster DH. He's a yeah. hitter. But His I like on him base as a percentage fielder. is pretty high. I, think I do. I love great, him. I think he plays player. every day. He should play every day no matter oh, yeah. what. Yeah. I don't he care played if he's the most hurt. games last year. He's yeah, our number one player last year. I don't care if he's hurt. He's going to play every day. All right. Well, I'm pretty. was he him, right? I'm pretty sure he played the most games. He probably led our team in innings. Tommy Pham had 155 games, two more. Oh, yeah, he had 153. He had 152. Manny oh. had 153. Tommy Pham had the most games played, and he's not signing? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> That's funny. Well, the middle of our infield is huh. definitely locked up with Jake, Fernando Tatis, who hit 42 bombs, 282. And Wait, say that name again? Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. I mean, the love of my Your favorite player's favorite player. Love He's going to be a 40 40 guy this year. I, I mean, so. that was goal. so close last year. Going into his no, he is. season. We can't, I mean, we can't assume. I'm just going to say everything because he's going to put it into existence. We better not miss as many games. No, he's season. not. He won't. You, you don't. You can't tell the future. To. You can't tell the future. I, I can. He's on roids okay. right now. I will be just stop testing for roids. <laughs> oh, yeah. True, he true, is true, true. on a star <laughs> cycle right now. <laughs> hey, man, you watch, man. He's going to be. 250 jacked. <laughs> jacked. Freaking Autobot. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like the Twin Towers are out there on the left side of the field. Yeah. That's what we're going to be saying. Well, yeah. Our infield for sure with Fernando, Manny Machado, Jay Cronworth locked, locked up. Locked up. Ain't moving the inch. Okay. So, other than DH, the biggest hole on our team is left. Field. Just say left and, and right. right field, and right. Left well, I mean, right, right field, field kind of because we have no one else. Though. Will Myers, yeah, Will Myers, because we yeah. have no one else. True, oh, guys man. getting old. Guys getting up there. 
we we forgot we don't have we haven't really had an off season yet. True. True. There's a lot of names, big names still out there for these yes, outfielders. I like, I like, I like how you're I like how you're putting that down. Picking up what you're putting down. You're saying. You're picking if up we, have the, hole, if we have a hole. We have a hole. I'd like to fix it. <laughs> um, how? I mean, left you're, field you're, you're paying empty. someone to fix it. You're not fixing it. You're paying someone to fix oh, it. Yeah, yeah, we're paying someone to fix this hole because it's deep. Be. It's deep. <laughs> It's a deep hole. Needs a lot of concrete. <laughs> Maybe some rebar. Needs to be refilled, repaved, painted. You know, it's a deep hole. Oh. We have no one in left field. Tommy Fam, I do not see coming back, and definitely not a left field anymore. He, I mean, he did play 155 games. We just talked about it. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. He, I, really, I honestly, he really only contributed in about. I 100. wouldn't mind him to have him back on the team. I know you guys hate him, but the the man got stabbed. He did right it before fit. the season. He, he didn't fit. He didn't fit. He had a different Why mentality. Why? He was talking shit to our, our people in left field. But yeah, he produced. Fans. He produced. He Tell wanted he to fight produce. a fan no, after the game. He did not like, produce. He, he hit 229, 340, 383. How many errors? Not one. Um. Well, I could tell you. Just give me about Not a minimum one. of five. A minimum of five. That, that's That's five runs. That's a lot more than one. That's five runs. Better than Eric. Nope. Eric only seven. Tatis. Tatis hit 40 home runs. <laughs> if, Fam had- if Fam hit 40 home <laughs> runs, I would not care. Two errors. two errors. Two errors, buddy. But, That's but, fire. But he's not even hitting his own weight. He was like minus 10 defensive run saved. I don't know. I just, I, I, I didn't. Mind him so, on the team, but I, if we do keep him, you Roman, know more than me. If we do keep him, I love him in a bench role of yeah, give a guy a day off. It. Yeah, but only if we sign him for minimum vet minimum. Like we yeah. have to give him the cheapest deal, and then maybe we I'll give him take six him. to eight million for one year. Are you mad at that? No, because I would rather give Jock six to eight year for one year. You know, <sighs> okay, I'd well, rather anybody give... would do that. Come on, come on, come on. Well that's that's his range right now. That's what he was about projected to get him a year. So at the same time, those two are are if you look at their stats, career stats as what people do, I guarantee they're very similar in numbers. Tommy Fan maybe even better like hitting wise. Jock yeah. Pearson definitely has more home runs, maybe more yeah. RBIs, but everything else they're also two they're total these... different ages. Well, what's the age bracket there? How I mean, different? Yeah, how I mean, different? Phantom is like I think 30, it's gotta be 28. 30, 30, I think. 31. 30? I think he's like 30, 29. 31. Jock's kind of old too, though. Tommy Pham's 33 and Jock Peterson's 29. Oh, shit. I thought and Jock is, be younger. And Jock has played more games than him. Yeah. Well, when you put it that way, I would definitely like Jock. But I mean, if we're not signing anybody, I wouldn't mind. Tommy. But I think we have to sign someone like that if we even want to compete because we yeah, can't no, hang with Profar Tommy there. Tommy has a better yeah. OPS plus, but I just don't think Tommy Pham fits with this team. And I mean, he just didn't. <laughs> I don't like what you he guys are saying. Team. All the stats are fire, but he doesn't fit with this team. Who cares, bro? He's he's a locker room guy. He might fight the fans once in a while, but yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried about that. I was yeah, just saying that. Like, I'm not too worried defensively about defensively anymore. He's not a left fielder anymore. Like he already Two said airs. Come on, bro. He's goddamn oh, not wait. fast anymore. Did you watch God, him out there? He looked like he, he was wearing he got stabbed print. one month before the season. Stabbed. Oh, multiple Literally months stabbed. Before the season. Bro. No, not stabbed, sliced. Sliced and he still performed mediocrely. He got maybe sliced bet more than in average, October than before the year. Okay, but still, did anybody yes. else get sliced in the MLB? <laughs> Fuck no. And no he's still I, know, I, I see your point, Roman. I do see it. You know, I'm. I mean, I'm not putting the argument up for a guy. Ship him if you want to, but I, he's not bad. I don't like. I mean, I don't like not having him on the team. I think if he was watching this, he's he loves you right now. He's <laughs> loving you. He's like that guy knows exactly what he's talking about. He wouldn't fight me if I said what's up to him. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, he just didn't. I mean, he did hit more homers than friggin' 
half our team. So yeah, exactly. We put him in the DH spot. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you go. That's a better. That's a DH spot. I mean, if you get yeah. him for bed minimum, and all he does is hit your DH spot, there you go. Because he's well, mad. He's a walker. We weird, weird fun fact about exactly Tommy that. Fam. Also, he gets walks, gets on base. OPS weird fun fact for Tommy Pham: How many years he's been in the league? Can do you have that or no? Damn, he's thirty-three. Well, I mean, he hasn't played that much. Just give me years, because this is fourteen just... to twenty-one. Huh? Two thousand fourteen <laughs> to twenty twenty-one. Oh. Okay, so out of the eight years he's been in the major leagues, seven of the sh- seven years he's made playoffs. He's seven for eight in making playoffs. Last year was his first year not making playoffs for his As team. So. That's a weird fun fact. He somehow is always on playoff teams. I don't know fucking how, but so he fits on this team because we're going to the playoffs this year, buddy. I mean, maybe he's never won a World Series on this team anymore. <laughs> but I just I don't think he's that good anymore. He he gets a walk and that's about it. Doesn't hit rare homer and had a LASIK eye surgery. We thought he's guys be seeing twenty twenty. Yeah, Fuck, yeah, sure. guy was seeing point two two nine. No. <laughs> I was seeing he literally looked like he was running with breaks <laughs> first clean. Yeah, he looked a little. I don't. I'm year, not trying to be like against him or any way, but no, no. no I just I, think I, that I, it's just better if we moved on to someone better. Like I like Josh. Go sign I like Cassiano. Go sign Chris Bryant. Yeah. There's guys love, out there. Love, love. Josh yeah. Peterson. Let's sign them all. Fuck it. Al Schwarber. <laughs> Let's sign them all. Let's, let's go. Yeah. For Let's real. spend some dough. The rest of our team kind of lines up. I mean, Trent Grisham, center field, Will Myers, yeah. right field. Those guys are going to be playing there. Unless Nick Cassianos comes, Will Myers moves to left field. I, I just think the best thing for Bob Melvin, the best thing AJ Peller can do for Bob Melvin in this situation, give him as many options as you goddamn can. Give him as many reliable options as possible. I think he will be able to figure out the combination to a winning lineup for multiple games. Yeah, and I think we need depth. Multiple. Too. We need a look, good bench, bro, because I feel like as soon as one of our nine go down, our team's in shambles. Yeah, and then no where. you have to rely on Kim to be and to replace the yeah. guy who is better than him, you know? And you yeah, can't yeah. replace Tatis. You can't replace Machado. Like, those are guys that are honestly irreplaceable. Like the Braves situation last year, you cannot replace Acuna. But I can sign four guys who can equal Acuna, and what do I do? I win a World Series. <laughs> Fucking blows my mind. Genius. Why? why? Genius. Genius. Someone it's needs to genius fucking move. hire us. Someone needs to hire us. <laughs> we'll, we will turn this team Turn the organization around. around. Quick. So we, we, figured, we figured out the holes. There's a hole at DH, obviously. And there's a hole them. at left field. So what do we do with holes? We fill them. Sure. We yes, pay sir. for them. We we might have to we pay. pay for them. There's two guys who are sparkling in everybody's eyes. Yeah, I like to rhyme. <laughs> I, yeah, I like to rhyme. <laughs> Nicholas Cassianos <laughs> and Chris Bri- Chris Bryant. I mean, Chris and Bryant is I one of those guys. Them. Both of them. Chris Eat. Bryant and Nick Cassianos are those guys who could play everywhere. Nick Cassiano started as an infielder, was a third baseman for the Tigers for a while, moved yep. to the outfield. I think he got better when he moved to the outfield. His bat grew. Um, he said a lot. He took away from J.D. Martinez that helped him. He yeah. moved, was traded to the Cubs, went on that crazy double streak, signed a good contract with Cincinnati Reds, fulfilled it tremendously. Was a couple all star like was a stud this past yeah. season and, and a season before and a season before that. Yes, and going back to Roman's point about Tommy Pham made two errors last year. Mm-hmm. So this is how I look at um, guys like that. So say Cassianos makes five more errors than Pham does, so we're losing defensive value, right? We're losing mm-hmm. defensive value, but he hits twenty more home runs than Pham did. I'll take it that equals out, you know, those are yeah, the type yeah. of values that I would be looking for. Yeah, if for sure. we're going to lose a strength at a position, we need to gain a strength gain at another position. Yeah. And we're not mentioning how we paid Tommy Pham $11 million last year. Yeah. That's not too much. I, mean, I would, hey, I would get paid 11 mil to get hit 229. 
<laughs> but if we're talking about Chris Bryant and Nate Cassianos, I mean, they are identical players. Like, absolutely identical. Yeah. I mean, Nick Cassianos has been in the league a little bit longer. But he makes a lot of errors, doesn't he? Cassianos? Yeah. He just he plays. I don't know. Team, yeah. Oh. Honestly, I don't know. I don't really look at. I don't see him making good defensive plays. So yeah, I, just, yeah. I don't. I can't tell if he's making errors. Though. I thought I heard somewhere that his fielding is not too good, but he fucking but, hits tanks. So, so. so there is like connection. There is connection with Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant uh, went to USD University of San Diego, so he mm-hmm. has lived in San Diego for four years. Has to at least love it, you know. He he went to college here, so there's a little connection there. But Cassianos. I don't necessarily know there's connection, but that guy, I'm telling you, he's perfect for the Padres because one, he doesn't even have a smartphone. He literally uses a flip phone. He's in group messages using a flip phone. That's what, or he has a buddy text him or call him like, yo, meeting at this time. He doesn't even have like any of that. He says he uses email. So Nick Cassianos ruins the group messages with the green. For yes. Him. Yes. He's that guy. He's, he's that, that type that of guy. friend. He's that. Oh guy. yeah. Don't want him. <laughs> don't want <them. laughs> oh, no flip phone ass Ooh, oh my the only team. connection that i can make is during all-star break he had an interview with someone on mlb network i think it was hunter pence but he said what's your what's, what's one thing you're looking for the most and nick Cassiano said i want to meet fernando tati senior and ask him how the fuck you create that <laughs> fernando tati's junior because he just had a son who's born i think he's one or maybe two years old and what better way than getting to know how you create that than playing with the sun playing with them yeah, yeah. if that's and, if that's yeah. something you wanted to know you can get more than a conversation coming to san diego i can tell you that buddy and i love that i love well, on the you bikes. know those guys to me are realistically exactly the same i mean i feel like even though nick has 200 more games they have the same amount of homers nick has a little bit more hits. They're the same amount of homers. Yeah, one dip, one homer difference. One hundred sixty-seven yeah. for Chris Bryant. That's crazy because Nick Cassiano. Cassiano changed his swing like three years ago or four years ago, but Chris Bryant was MVP. Seven, he has seventy yeah. more doubles than him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, and they were on the same team at once. Yes, they were. They're boys. They're boys. Neither of those guys would be perfect signings for this roster. I mean, they both, both like we mentioned this whole time, I would take either of them. I would take both of them in a heartbeat. But for a fact now, I would say we signed Chris Bryant. Let's just say that. Okay. Yes or no? Would you think you'd rather sign? Okay. If we have Chris Bryant, you think rather Cassianos? Yeah. Why? Less money. You think it'll be less money? Okay. Yeah, Chris cool. Bryant just won MVP, so he might be looking a couple years. I think I think his agent uses that on his resume. Listen, oh, well, homeboy does. won five oh, MVP five years ago. He deserves f- ten more million than you're offering yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. All right. But I like Look. Nick. Okay, so we're on Nick now. No, we're on Chris. <laughs> we're, we can be on KB still. Okay. All right. So, so. Okay, but there's still. I mean, we still have a DH to fulfill. Because Chris Bryant's going to be a lot of money. Or Nick Cassianos will be a lot of money. There's still DHFL. I still think you need another outfielder because I'm not no. comfortable I with think Gerson Profar as our yes. swing outfielder. I agree with that. Either another outfielder or I uh, think another whoever first base is our outfielder. Every... That would be a perfect fit, which a.k.a. Jock. Yeah, or Schwarber. Schwarber did that with the uh, Red Sox this past year. Yeah. yeah. They're – I would consider Schwarber though probably in the same amount of money as a KB. Uh, a really, because Cassianos how, how wild he went off of. Uh, yeah, honestly, of I think he now. they're only maybe five million off, and in baseball money that doesn't seem like a lot to me. Five mil, like you can, I don't know. That's just me though. Well, I think there you definitely. I think the Padres are two outfielders like shy on this team. Yeah, and, and I do think that we need one big name like that we've been talking about. And then one guy under the radar that we really have probably is just going to blossom. About. Yeah. He's just going to blossom into a role or we'll see him and be like, Holy shit. That was a perfect fit for this team. You know, someone I mean, who has a lefty power bat, that is all I can ask for. Yeah. I, I, and I think jock would be awesome, but a lot of people are talking about Seiya Suzuki 
Uh, that's an option. I'm not the biggest fan of this just because we've been trying this, I feel like, too much now. Like, we've signed a couple guys from Japan uh, as of recently. We've you signed some came from Korea. Like, I feel like we're trying a lot with these overseas guys. But, you know, for some reason, I feel like I want some. Oh, where's our Hideki Matsui? Who the <laughs> fuck is that guy? I mean, a Nelson Cruz is a an, a guy who I think fits in this lineup. A one year about... deal, just go bang. It'd be our DH, go bang. What about Eric Cosmer to DH and we signed Freddie Freeman? That's interesting because Ooh. I think if we sign him, you'd have to shed cap somehow. Will Myers or Hosmer, you'd have to get rid of to get. That larger mm-hmm. contract. Freddie's asking for the for bag. bag. Freddie's he just won probably a World getting and he wants the money. He's getting a Manny deal. Yes. Damn, really? Damn near. Oh shit. I mean, it won't be as man. big because he's a little bit older, but yeah. he's getting the he's getting the biggest first baseman bag there is. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, never mind then that. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think he f- he fits and, on this. And what they've been saying for him is all any reports that are with teams with big money, the Yankees are interested, the Dodgers are interested, and then the team he's on, the Braves. Those are the three teams I've heard that are interested in him because those are the three teams that can fucking afford it. Got the bag. Yeah. When does that uh, cap thing come into play? Well, we'll find out. Yeah. In in two weeks. Don't really know. I think the season's going to get delayed, if I'm being honest. Do we have a season, though? We yeah. have one for well, sure, one hundred percent. But 100%. I don't think the season will be delayed. Honestly, I think they'll yeah. delay spring training because so this happens players and all managers. the time. I feel like yeah, and it pisses me off. So every much. time we've had a every lockout, sport. spring training has delayed, but it's usually started on time. Yeah, they set a, a like a deadline. Like we have to get it done by this by date, this or else, time. or else this yeah. is gonna. This I mean, they're meeting happen. every day this week, so that kind of makes sense right now. Yeah. Yeah, and. It happens in every sport. I've at least noticed old oh, seasons are going to be delayed if there's not a deal done at this day. And that's what everyone talks about all the media. And then all of a sudden, boom, deals done that day or the day before. Like, Oh, season's back on back to normal. We're all good. Everybody chill. Calm but down. that's, that is interesting because that includes the DH that because DH technically is a speculation, but it's been agreed upon. That's something that's, going to be included. oh yeah how so we don't even know dh might so DH, they, they, they it, announced or? it that it, it's been agreed upon it will be oh, okay. a, a deal yeah yeah okay. they announced that. but yeah they announced it but like we still can't confirm that it's gonna happen because yeah, yeah. there's nothing official out but okay so all right so if we're building up our 2022 padres team we have an addition of a big bat and a little bat outfield that's what they need. So big mm-hmm. bat, little bat for the outfield. Um, so now we're getting into our pitching situation. I think we got four guys who are ready to go. You're solid. Four guys I'm pretty solid at. Opening day is going to be Joe Musgrove. He had absolutely the best season for Padres and pitching-wise. He had the mm-hmm. no-hitter. He was a stud all the way around. San Diego guy, I think that's an awesome thing for him. Who Number two. Th- yeah, who do you think is two? You? You. Probably you. Think, okay. Yeah. I think just – If he can find some through. spider attack again, I'm loving it. I love it. <laughs> a little, I'm a little nervous on him, but I think he got too much into the spider attack. I think he needed to this offseason get back to his roots. To hop off of it. Of pitching and use back. My use bummer. back. Then, I mean, I saw so much Blake Snell towards the end of the season that was so good. I want him in the three spot again. I, really? That's fine with me because I think the guy in the four spot is will be the key guy to this whole yeah. operation. Is he healthy? Is he healthy? Healthy, healthy AF. Healthy. Are you sure? He's, he's healthy. Going he's on the training, shrooms. Fully he's loaded. on many I've mushrooms. He's smoking a lot of weed. He's back. On a cloudy day. He yes, actually sir. moved his parents to San Diego, and he got engaged. I'm telling you, this man is going to have a well, I love crazy it. year. 
The name is Mike Clevenger. At number Mike eight. Clevenger, folks. Yeah. If we pencil him in the number four, we have a number one guy in four spots in this rotation. I love it. Uh, and that's, our best pitcher want to face that. might be the number four. Four. But we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Be, I mean, I'm <laughs> very excited for that. But our number five, Padre, San Diego Padres' number five starter is the biggest question mark. Let me throw a name hey, out there. Hey, honestly. Let me throw a name out there and let me see what your action, okay? Mike Clevenger's best friend, TB Trevor Bauer. Oh, he's not. Oh, whoa, no whoa, team, whoa, no whoa. team wants him. No he's team. On team. He's on the Dodgers. He's on the Dodgers. He's on the Dodgers. He's on the Dodgers. And- Yes. We don't want him. We I thought he's free agent. That's a nope. name we don't want. Next year he's a free agent. Oh, that's a name we don't want. He, no, he's I actually, wanted him. He I only wanted to... him because he. I thought he wasn't on the team, and he's gonna take any bag. We give him five million one year, and he, he fucking no, shoves he, at five. He us. can't. He can't be in San Diego. Can't be in San Diego. He's the. He's not allowed to be in San Diego. He's a restraining order. No, I don't think that's CNN. Real. That was CNN. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, number five is I hate to say it, but it's Chris Paddock, and that's a relentless. No, relentless. no, he needs ah. to put his fucking cowboy hat back on and call himself the fucking sheriff. If that's gonna make him pitch better, if not, yeah. I want him gone. Go back to Miami where he came from. Chris Paddock mm-hmm. pitched 108 innings and had a five. 07 ERA and 23 games started. You don't think Java Cup Joe? Is the five? He's our ace. He's our ace. Oh, that's number one, gay. Oh, we skipped over him. No, we are no. So, so if this is how I picture in the oh. roto roto right now, if those top four guys can hold their own, you know, they can be out there most majority of the year. Say those four guys are out there for our 130 games, I think we're we're set. I think we're feeling pretty good about that. The fifth spot, though, I'm okay if we, we shuffle around, test as many guys as possible. I know I you want a solid fifth starter, but at the same time... It could be a combination those, of all of them. If those top four guys are outperforming their expectations, that fifth starter, we're going to lose a game. We got to lose... One day of the week, you know, we got yeah. to we can't win. We can't win them all. Yeah, and that's just kind of the game. But, but yeah, like you said, Chris Paddock. I mean, I'm not as excited about him anymore. I mean, he's going into his age 26 season. We should have had high hopes. I mean, his rookie year was so much fun. I mean, he had pitched 140 innings, three 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 ERA, but it was more than that. The beginning, the first half of that season. He was lights out. Electric. It was it was Chris Paddock show. He was earned the opening day starter. You know, he it was it was him. He had a great year. And then I think it got to his head too much. He dealt with injuries. I'm hoping this is where Ruben Nabila comes in. This is the perfect case for Ruben because Chris Paddock has everything. He has the 96, 97. He has the changeup, and he has a little curve that it hits every now and then. But Ruben is the type of guy that could get more. I saw what he did with Cal. Cal struggled. Cal Quantrill struggled with the Padres for years. Yeah. Command. Was he a starter? Was he a reliever? Could he go the distance? Goes over. He started doing really well for the uh, the now – Gladiators before Indians. The Gladiators. That, that's going to be new for me to say. Yeah. I thought they're the, uh, they the Guardians. Or Guardians. Guardians. Yeah, that's yeah. what they are. All right. Even the. Oh, no, the word. It sounded right. It sounded right. I was oh, so confused. Funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Guardians. There you go. Not Gladiators. Yeah. Guardians. The commanders. But- yeah, commanders. God, <laughs> too many new names in sports, <laughs> Jim. What the fuck? Um, but, you know, his projections are not good. He's projected 129 innings with a 4-4 ERA, 129 strikeouts, 33 walks. It's not that. It does, it's not pretty. But I think this is a perfect case for Ruben, and I've heard so much good things about Ruben. I hope he can fix Mackenzie Gore. 
Four. Another name. Say the it one next, more time. The next fifth. I hope he can fix Mackenzie Gore. And I think this is the reason the Padres gave him whatever bag they did because they moved him out of Cleveland where he's been for so long to be our pitching so, coach. We hired him before we got the our manager. Our pitching coach was our first Bob? coach brought yeah. in, into the new um, scheme, the new regime, as they say. But I think he he's gonna have to do something with Chris Paddock and Mackenzie Gore. And the, one of the best things that I saw is it was literally like the day after we signed him, he was already with Mackenzie Gore and Mike Clevenger. And Clevenger, I think, was a big reason we got him. Clev possible did, did great things under him with the rehab and everything is awesome. I mean, so, the lockout sucks because he hasn't yeah. been able to work with them. This is what absolutely sucks about a lockout is that. We got our new coaching new staff. Coaches that they can't haven't coach. been able to talk to them for six weeks. MLB, this is bullshit. Like this, is where I start getting angry. Yeah, and so one thing that I read about uh, the what's his name, Nibla? Nibla. 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 One thing I read about him, call him is Call Ruben. Call him Ruben. <laughs> I'll call him Coach. I'll call him Coach. One thing I read about Coach is uh, he loves sliders. He loves sliders. He's fixed guys with sliders. All of those guys in Cleveland have dirty sliders. So they've reinvented a slider. Paddock doesn't throw a slider. Something that he could hopefully inter- mm. inter- intertwine. Yeah, because look who has a good slider on the Padres. Blake Snell, great slider. You great. Darvish, absolutely great slider. Mike Clevenger, haven't seen a pitch in a while. but Doesn't Weathers got a slider? But... No, Weathers doesn't. But all these guys have great sliders. Why not Im- imitate what's being great for these guys? Like, why is it so hard for these guys to just figure out how to fucking pitch? And speaking of weathers, I know you brought him up for that, but I yeah. think there's a real possible shot at him at the fifth spot. I mean, we've talked we talked to him earlier this offseason. He's putting in work. Yep. I would like to see him get a chance. Like, I don't know where the Padres see him where they think he fits I personally think he is he's not a uh he's only a one time through the lineup guy so he can give you one time through the lineup and then I don't know if he's got the correct stuff enough to keep going as a starter would so I think he's the first guy of the pen in a lot of these games to build up being the fifth starter in case Paddock shits the bed again in case Mackenzie Gore is nowhere to be seen, senior yeah. pop in his asshole in fucking San Antonio. <laughs> See, I uh, hate that role for him because I, <laughs> he deserves an actual shot. I mean, I know he only pitched 93 innings in a 4-6-5. That's better than what Paddock did. Yeah, and he was hurt half the time. And he was hurt half the time. He which we confirmed. Last year of the season, which he said wasn't supposed to give On us that pod. information. Yes, sir. But he did have an ankle chip. He had a fracture or whatever that only happens to dancers that he was pitching with so we know that affected him in his later half and he couldn't pitch longer in the games he lost command probably because his fucking foot was burning up <laughs> honestly like couldn't I couldn't step I, on the no, thing that, i'm sorry that, i can't put the ball in the strike zone my foot's on fire it feels like yeah. i'm missing a chunk of my bone like, if he said that to bruce arians Oh, he's, <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. Taking the jersey but off. I think I think that's someone jacks. who deserves a shot if he's on this roster and hasn't been traded because I know he's one of those guys. Good. Yeah, and I really haven't. I don't. We should ask him. I don't know what he likes. If he likes to start, then well, I'll let him start. But if he likes to be more of that, his dad Clean vibes. Up well, we kind of asked yeah. him like that ish, and he just said he wanted to be where the team needed him most. Obviously, team guy, team great guy, team guy, great team great guy, team guy. Great team guy. But Love it. I mean, I think the getting the best out of him is a starter, and I think that's building him as a lefty starting pitcher who shoves. And I mean, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. And I mean, I don't know, we'll see what Bo Mel, yeah. We saw him and shove against the Dodgers Bella. too. We've we seen, seen him, him, seen him in the shove. biggest moment just completely tear through the Dodgers lineup. So I have I, I have it. high hopes for this kid. I love it. And honest at this point, 
he can only get better, you know? A lot of these guys can only get better. It's very hard to see them decrease. And maybe that's coming from a biased point that we're fans of this team, but that's kind of how you have to think of the season. You don't think someone's going to do bad, and then they just do bad. (laughs) Yeah. Like, that's kind of how it's been. So, I just – the Padres need all nine guys on the same page to win right now. Because I do think we have the talent to win a World Series. We've seen we just gotta some more pitchers. Yeah, and last year I, I kept saying it like all through the year, we haven't seen the best Padres baseball. We haven't seen the best Padres baseball yet. And it never happened. Like it just never fucking happened last year. We were good for maybe two weeks and it felt like, oh, now that's going to carry us into the rest of the year. We really didn't see all nine guys, already nine guys from Padres click and – get on a roll yeah so hopefully fucking this hopefully year hopefully this year yeah, yeah. For real. it's gonna be an know. exciting season for sure a couple of guys who were in the pitching conversation last year who will not be in this year is adrian morihone and michael michael Baez. um they're both uh, tommy john guys adrian's supposed to be out until august 1st and then Baez is supposed to be out till july 1st then oh. come back, rehab, you know. I love that if he comes back August 1st, whew, watch out for the playoffs. That guy's fire. He's good. Yeah, Morihone, I like Morihone, especially in the bullpen, later in the bullpen. Yeah. Um, just throwing gas. I, I, like I wish him. we had him, bro. He's a, he's a, he could be a five guy. Yeah. I mean, he, his command was a little man. off, and he never worked deep. Oh, he didn't. Season. Damn, he didn't even talk we about that talk guy. about the Cowboy? No. El Caballo. El Caballo? The horsey, the Nelson Lamette. <laughs> yeah, See, that this is another number five starter who I number number five. I haven't starter, even thought yeah. about in a little bit because had a lot he of struggled. issues last year. Struggled last year. Struggled. Yeah. Last year. struggled. Yeah, just he honestly did. just fumbled the bag. He could have yeah. been a paid. He could have got paid that. Now he's yeah. getting. I mean, he's he'll get Ms. Millions, but well, I mean, he yeah. got a bag. What's good about Lamette is he's still relatively young i know he's 30 he i mean we'll be 30 this year and he has some time to work over this because we've seen it he has like one capable stuff like number one type guy oh yeah for sure he shoved for a long time when the potties were shitty when they were (laughs) shitty we had nobody else when we didn't have Tatis, he was shoving. Yeah, and 2020, he absolutely dominated 209. I mean, I know that was our shortened year, but then at the end of the year got hurt, missed playoffs. Last year, came into the year hurt. Didn't really pitch as much 4-4 ERA in 47 innings. This is a guy where I think he could be an ultimate closer, bro. I think he could be such a stud closer. Mm-hmm. I know. I, I think that too, but we'll we see. We lost Mark, didn't we? Didn't we lose Mark? Yeah, Mark's, yeah, Mark's gone. With the Diamondbacks. He Sad didn't fit day. either. He's the type of guy who didn't fit. Yeah, he didn't really no? like. Nice job for us. He didn't like oh. playing for a manager that was younger than him. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think he did. <laughs> Um, but I definitely think that if Lamelt's healthy, so would you consider that a hole then? Since we lost Mark, yeah, yeah that's I think a big our closer spots a yeah. huge hole. We haven't even talked about it. Yeah. No, um, I think Lamette is definitely a closer option. I don't know where he is health wise. I saw him. I, I watched a bullpen of his. It sounded good. Snap was there. Yeah. But um, I don't know. We'll see. It all depends if he could throw that slider. Because yeah. he has the most devastating slider in the league, I think. Could throw yeah. it at any time and in any count. And if his elbow's there, I'm all for it. But if he's dealing with injuries, I think he should just have the Tommy rehab. Get it over back, with. Get it over with and be a closer. Like, tell yourself, all right, I'm not going to work deep inning games anymore i'm here to finish one game give it yeah. everything i'm here one to inning. finish i mean one inning all you got it's it's got gonna be perfect. hard at the start i think just because the mindset is completely different um i mean i guess not you as a pitcher you're still you want to get guys out that's your main goal yeah. get guys yeah. out 
Yeah, it's just a little different of a mindset. I mean, you get to the games later. You, you know, you like know, I can now or my, never. To be honest, you can give your all though for the fifteen pitches. Like yeah, as a yeah. starter, you kind of limit yourself, low key. Don't want to um, use all your energy at once. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, but I don't know. He can do both. We have seen yeah, him go deep stuff in the game. That could be absolutely dirty enough to be a closer. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, and, and sometimes mean, when he, I wish last year. I know I liked Mark, and but I wish he was had a shot I, I wish that i mean our rookie mark, coach jace I, I understand mark's shit though didn't hang when he had no spider attack when the spider attack ended i know a lot of guys but he doesn't throw 95 he doesn't throw no he's I not a think, fast I, that, I don't i didn't see mark succeeding another year i really don't his, the, his age uh, i mean and everything he signed with the Diamondbacks, a team that's not in contention. Signed before the lockout, so I think he's at that same point of his career. Like, you know, just getting money. It, yeah, he just ju- juicing the bag. I don't even think he got a good enough deal for what he did last year. I mean, he led the league in saves and got pennies to what he should have. Yeah, um, but yeah, closer is a huge hole, and I think. I think you could build in house. Like I don't know where Lamed is. Obviously, I don't know yeah. where Pomerantz is. Pomerantz had off season surgery. He was he was a stud for us. Every time he pitched, the, I feel like I like sidearm Tim Hill. Tim Hill not is a closer. Too sketchy. He's not yeah. a closer. Yeah, Doesn't gets throw hard sometimes. Enough. Gives up too many home runs. If we're that being sidearm though, could be deadly. You put, pay, in uh, play eight innings. Situational then, circumstances only. Uh, no, but oh, I don't uh, like him. But I mean, what was I got? To Evan Cox, oh. yeah, drafted him last year. He's going into his age twenty five year. I mean, he went did college all throughout and four years. If we're being for real, this is Golden a Spikes winner last this, year. But this this Cole in the closing spot, like the Padres haven't had a bad closer since nineteen ninety six. Before that, Trevor Hoffman was there. Then we haven't had a bad closer in. 20 30 years bro think about it yeah the closer has always been our strongest suit on our team the last 30 years it's so having a hole there is weird but then kinda at scary. the same time kind of scary at the same time it's we've always had a good closer so whoever they put in there has well, always been good the yeah. scariest part to me about bob melvin coming over and his relationships is the scariest guy in our bullpen has a relationship with Bob Melvin. Yeah. He used to play for him in Is Oakland. That... Drew Pomerantz. No. Oh. Not the same guy who I'm thinking of. Spit I'm thinking out. of Emilio Pagan. Pagan? Pagan? Oh, my God. Oh, Mister, me, I'm just going to give up a homer every other day. Oh, I hate seeing that guy on the mound. Bro. Pagan we, we played, played too. and had a great year for the A's. Just one random year was traded after that. Had a good year with them. Was their closer. Maybe Bob was the mind behind that. I said, uh, he might no, not do No, because he had a good year with the Rays and then came to the Padres and absolutely is terrible. Throws 90 poo right down the middle and says, try and it hit my fastball, buddy. Raked off of it, bro. And they said, okay, I can do it. See you later. Some of these guys Up think the they throw way harder than they do because a lot of these guys, <laughs> aka Pagan, throw ninety-five right down the middle. That's, fans have that's in average. average. They see Pagan come on the mound, and the whole whole stadium just goes ah. No, you're you're getting whip whiplash from watching all the home runs go. So there's another one. There's another one. <laughs> yeah. So. Catcher is the biggest hole on our pitching side. I know we said number five. Closure. We have four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <everyone>. Closer <laughs> is our biggest hole on the pitching side. We, ha- we have like three guys to fill our number five starter. We have relievers. We do not have a certified closer. Yeah. No. And there aren't many guys out there. Out I mean, there. There's, there's one, Kenley Jansen. I'm are you? Are I'm you not mad. Because- I'm not mad at that. I like that just because he was a Dodger, even though we hate Dodgers. We hate yep, them. Yep. We hate but him. we love if he comes to us. If he comes to the brown and, and yellow. And then does baby. it to them. 
And if he does it to them, then we're okay with it. Exactly. Yeah, no exactly. grand slams though. You cannot give up a grand slam. Ever. <laughs> no, we pull him out of those you. situations. We pull him. Yeah. out. <laughs> you will never hear the end of it. No. I'll be in your ear. I'll be in your DMs. Let you know. Um, you I got. I like I like the little Kinley. I know he's getting up there in age, but if you get him a, on a one two year deal, you know, get him a little angry at the Dodgers for letting him go at the end. You know the shit they do to us. Go get our former guys and all the time, us. bro. Let's go do that. I think we go get Kenley. Maybe if not Kenley, Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly throws gas. Oh, Joe man. Kelly. I love the gas. I Joe would take Kelly Joe is a Kelly. FA. He's an yes. FA. Yes. Yes. Get him. You know we give him a mariachi jacket, and he's. On his way down. Yes, bro. <laughs> I'll get. I'll dress up in the full mariachi gear and start freaking down, pl- singing down there every game for him. Let's just play like speaker music, but have like fake instruments. Be like, look at us. <laughs> We're the mariachi guy. I would love. I would love both of them to be on this team. I mean, I don't know. You what know, about a lot of holes. Richard Rodriguez? Isn't he a? Free agent? I think he is. He is. I think that, is a, that, that was boy a is a closer. That boy is a closer. I, I don't know if he is. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. That'd be a good name. I like him. I like what he did in on um, the Pirates. I do. I do like him. But he he's is, a bag chaser, though, isn't he? he no, he's not a bag uh, chaser. He's just unknown. No? He's unknown because oh. he's kind of sucked on the Braves. He kinda yeah, he kind of shoved Braves. in Pittsburgh. Did. He shit the bed when he oh. hit to the Braves, and they left him off their postseason roster. Yeah, so he he really didn't win a World Series ring. <laughs> no. I mean, not really. Not really. <laughs> Neither did Acuna, though, so. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he left whoa. his knee out there on the field. <laughs> oh, oh. His ACL is still on the floor. <laughs> the body's in the floor. Um, yeah, so right now Padres' biggest holes are obviously the newly acquired DH because that's a new position never had before in the NL, except our 2020 year. Um, our left field, there's a huge hole, a gaping hole. Um, <laughs> and then we got closer. Closer's a big hole for this team that not many yeah. people are talking about because yeah. I'm not comfortable with Drew Pomerantz because he always gets hurt, and I'm not comfortable with Emilio Pagan. And then there's no one else after that. You can't tell me Raymond Kerr, the guy who's <laughs> no, you know who they would go to for his entire career. Craig Stammen. Yeah, Craig been... Stammen. That's Craig who I think Stammen. that's who I think would be their God, go-to. The Padres love Craig Stammen. Hate that guy, dude. How's he still on the roster, dude? Literally, dude. No, he actually was really good for us last year. I'm was not, very mean, good. Was he? he? Really good was for us. Really last good. Year. And, and every major time I saw him, he sucked. No, that was Loved. a couple years ago. A couple years ago, he sucked when the yeah. Nationals were really good and they tanked like oh. four homers in a row off of him. Speaking of the Nationals, Daniel Hudson sucked. Oh, I feel, dude, everybody we traded for this year gone now. We just wasted and, all those prospects. And all the of prospect them. we traded for Daniel Hudson is going to be so good. Yes, he I would. That guy would be the closer. That guy would be the, our closer. Hey, yeah, speaking I, of, uh, I'm so mad of. Um, Robert Hassel, isn't he about to come down? Yeah, no. so we got come up. I mean, no. a couple. No, I was only in, he ready. was at Lake Elsinore last year. Yeah, no. that's single A. Oh, I thought he was about to come up. No. He's an outfielder, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I need him. Fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it. I'm, you know, that's another reason. Are they going to give a guy eight year deal, six year deal, when we have a guy who's three, two, three years away? Yeah. We yeah, have hell yeah. Problems. Spend your money. Get, <laughs> you know, why, as an owner, why are you keeping your money? Fucking spend it on the field, idiot box. Well, idiot we, box. there's also some guys we have to resign. Joe Musgrove and Mike Clevenger are both free agents after the season. Damn. Well, Joe Musgrove is getting a bag. We'll give him the bag. I don't care. He's a potter for life. From now on, I he's bet, a potter for life. I think Clevenger is – we'll have to see, but – Clevenger loves San Diego so much, I think he'll take a hometown discount. I think That'd so as well. That'd be like. I lit. think he yeah. takes a hometown discount. Yeah, not mad at and that. And then yeah. after that, I mean, it's up in the air because Blake Snell. It's also a about. whole different thing on do they want to win or are they I guys? Yeah. Do they, do they, are they playing to win or are they playing for the back? Because... But also if they are winning currently, like if the team wins, yeah. people stay automatically. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think this is a great year. 
I'm praying that guys do not get hurt because there's a lot of guys out there who we AJ Preller has proven he's a wild man when it comes to trade deadline, those moves that he gets. Yep. And if we're in a position to win, he's it's there. gonna be it's yeah, we're trading, we're making moves no matter what. Yeah. So I just it's gonna be a crazy year. I hope uh I'm excited starts for it. on time. Yep. If you listen hope. to us, if you're if if you're coming to the end and you're listening to us, these are uh my personal beliefs. Fernando Tatis is gonna win the MVP. So if you're heading to Vegas anytime soon and you want to make a little extra cash, it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit. Futures, Fernando MVP, baby, and Fernando to win or lead the league, entire league in homers. In homers? He gets it this year. Yep. Entire league. Um yeah, right. that kind of wraps up a little bit what I wanted to talk about. I mean, we let there's some prospects that CJ Abrams, we're excited to see what he does during spring. Obviously, RH3, we talked about him. Luis yep. Camazano, we talked about him a little bit earlier. Damn, that's Gore. fucking true. I forgot. Chris Paddock had a great spring. That's what kind of got him in the major league roster. So. Yeah, so all these guys, you know, if CJ you Abrams needs spring has training. An absolute stunning spring training, that might move Eric Hosmer to a DH, Jake Cronworth at first, CJ at second. I Did we have spring training last year? Early um, or it was a weird. Um, was it COVID yeah. infected? No, they they had a spring training last year, but it was weird. It wasn't as many people up and shit like that. Oh yeah, they had the the lawns boxed off, huh? With like tape. Yeah, it was all weird. Um, like we said, Mackenzie Gore. There's a couple guys: James Woods, Josh Mears, and Vic Acosta, who I want you guys to look out for this year on. Prospects wise, couple outfielders, one infielder, young guys, but going to be making strides in the future of the organization, or they're going to be trade chips that you might hear later this year, because those are the the five, five, six, seven to twelve guys are the guys you trade, because those are number one somewhere else. You don't trade your number one and twos unless you're getting Mike Trout at this point in the game. <laughs> yeah, and like and, the Padres. And- the pro- the prospects they have are top guys. We can't get rid of really. Yeah, our top guys are the top guys, but our our those guys you're talking about, we're iffy on them. We don't know. We haven't really heard much about them. They t- they had great Arizona fall leagues. I remember hearing their names during that, but then the lockout kind of hit, and now we've been screwed with really no haven't baseball heard nothing. News. Yeah, haven't no heard baseball nothing. moves. Yeah, I mean they're barely Which, getting back to the meetings now, yeah. so. I hope everyone's ready. If you watch this to this point of the podcast, I hope you're excited for the Padres season. We're going to be covering it. We're going to be covering the whole entire MLB as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Try to do one Padre video a week and then one entire MLB video a week. We'll be dropping those in the coming weeks. More sports videos. We're going to be doing a couple discussions. We're going to be doing debates here coming up. So I hope you guys – are staying tuned like subscribe comment subscribe yes sir let Don't us know in the comments your goal i i think yeah. this team has to be shooting for first place over in the 100 division, we need 100, over 100 wins. games we need 100 wins under the and belt. world championship obviously bring that gold championship to the brown and gold city we i'll got tell no you what i told san diego and i'll tell you what i told ryan Padres weathers to do it see you at the parade See you at the parade, baby. See you at the duck boat, Nothing baby. wrong with being average. Yes, sir. Deuces.